Did you know that only about 50% of prescribed medications are taken correctly and that 20 to 25% of prescriptions are never filled at all? And up to 20% of patients take drug holidays after filling prescriptions and frequent misdoses are common? Non-adherence to medication can cause approximately 125,000 deaths more than 10% of rehospitalizations per year, and according to one estimate, leads to as much as $300 billion per year in healthcare costs from complications and associated hospitalizations. To solve this problem, we need to get patients more engaged in the process. But how do we make that happen? Tune in and find out. Welcome to Fading Memories, a supportive podcast for those of us caring for a loved one with memory loss. A quick note before we get into the show, please make sure you're following us on social media. All of the links to our accounts are in the show notes, which you can click through right there on your phone down below. Got it? Thanks so much. And while you're there, would you mind giving us a four or probably five, maybe even a 10 star review? We're still a new podcast, and this is the best way for new people to find us. And make sure you like and share this with your friends. Medication adherence, which is a fancy term for taking our medications the way they have been prescribed, is an important part of our health care that is often overlooked. It's all too easy to take our medications improperly. Just the other day... My husband was out of town and I realized that I had neglected to give our oldest dog his arthritis pain meds for two days. Talk about failure to manage medications properly. When I went to give him his morning dose, he waited till I was out of his line of sight when I heard him clear his throat and spit the pill on the floor. This simple act of just giving my dog his pain medications and his reaction to the process is common all too common. When you're caring for someone with memory loss, the possibility of not taking prescriptions exactly right skyrockets. The World Health Organization calls poor medication adherence a worldwide problem of striking magnitude. Inadequate adherence contributes to increases in morbidity, which is simply means having a disease, mortality, and health care costs. And Lord knows we don't need higher health care costs at this point. Additionally, taking medications improperly also causes frustration among patients and providers. It is a theory that improving medication adherence would have a greater influence on the health of our population than in the discovery of any new therapy. Now just think on that for a second. If we all took our prescriptions the way we were supposed to, we would have a healthier population versus them finding a cure for something they don't have a cure for. Part of the struggle in achieving higher rates of medication adherence is due to a gap in our knowledge. Surprising. Lacking a clear understanding of how and why the medications do what they do is a large part of the problem. I was shocked when I read this. Also surprisingly, taking medications as they are prescribed is done in only about 50% of cases. So that's half of us. Don't do it right. Approximately 20 to 25% of prescriptions are actually never filled. And 20% of patients take drug holidays after filling prescriptions and frequent missed doses are common. And I felt guilty about the dog. Wowzer. When patients don't take their medications as prescribed, it is estimated to cause approximately 125,000 unnecessary deaths and more than 10% of the hospitalizations each year. Staggering numbers. According to one estimate, it also leads to as much as 300 billion, that's with a B, per year in healthcare costs from complications and associated hospitalizations. So if that doesn't convince you that we need to handle our prescriptions exactly right, I don't know what would. 
Non-adherence to medication is often hidden. The critical first step in improving adherence is uncovering its presence. In a study by LaPayne, nearly 18% of patients would never tell a provider they were not going to fill a new prescription, although providers estimate only 9% withhold such information. So they're off by 50%. That's huge. Patients are often reluctant to disclose their true medication-taking behavior for a variety of reasons, unsure of the provider's reaction to their non-adherence. Although researchers have tested many interventions to increase adherence, results are sometimes conflicting and often unclear, perhaps because the interventions vary. Typically, the most effective interventions are complex and labor-intensive. No one has time or patience for something that takes more time and more effort. Some research has focused on persuasive elements, patient empowerment, and education. It shouldn't be surprising that, obviously, persuasion and education seem to work the best. The key seems to be getting patients more engaged in the process. So how do we make that happen? Healthcare has long lagged behind other industries in engaging its users, especially in any kind of automated way. For healthcare, this kind of proactive outreach is still kind of new, which I don't even know how that's possible, but apparently it's a thing. The developers of medication adherence tools are trying to change that. They know that patients who take their medications correctly tend to be healthier. There have been a few studies on the use of technology to help improve medication adherence. Some of these new technologies include things like the smart pill bottle. These are internet-linked devices designed to remind people to take their pills. Sensors in the bottle detect when the cap is twisted off and how much medication is removed. When it's time to take a pill, a blue reminder light pulses. Miss a dose, a chime goes off. And then the patient or a caregiver can get a phone call or a text message if the dosage continues to be missed. Research from the company that makes these fancy bottles claims they've increased adherence by 24%, but actually changing behaviors may take more than an electronic nudge. Some recent research has found that there was only a slight increase in remembering to take the medications. This may be because the reminder wasn't powerful enough. Then again, it may be because forgetfulness isn't the entire problem. Patients, in many cases, don't like taking medications every day. It reminds them of their illness, and they'd just rather not be reminded of that. Any medication can have a negative side effect, and we know some cost a lot. The medications, not the side effects. Using the smart pill bottle won't make the drug cheaper or get rid of the nasty side effects. One thing I learned when my dad was still alive was negative side effects generally got treated with more drugs. Between his coming home from the one-month hospital stay and going on hospice, my sister and I had to figure out how to manage his 20-plus prescriptions. Neither of us is stupid, but the stress caused by being unsure of what we were doing was extremely high. I'm assuming that dad took his medications properly, but it wasn't till after he passed away that I realized his mind wasn't 100% right. At the end, he was almost as confused as mom. So it's obvious to me that medication adherence is a challenge we'll be facing for quite some time. Hopefully, between education, technology, and the reduction of stigmas associated with various diseases, we can solve the problem and have a healthier world. While I was researching this topic, I was contacted by the developers of an app called DoseCast. I spoke to a Robert Longmire, and he was outside on a beautiful fall day in downtown Washington, D.C. as the presidential motorcade rolled by. So please forgive the ambient noise the conversation is still worth listening to. You have the, the, the app itself for individuals who are able to, to use the app to remember their own medication regimen. It could be somebody who is you know, taking one med, 
daily. It could be people who take three plus meds. We have some people that have 20, 25 meds that use the application. Um, and so when you have medication regimen so complicated, um, you know, things are happening throughout the day. People are going out throughout their lives. Um, and it, it gets very complicated to keep everything on track. So with the app, you're able to put that in initially. Um, and then it just reminds you throughout the day. It works on your tablet. It works on your smartphone. It works with Apple watches. It works with other wearables. So it really allows people to get those nice reminders so that they can stay on track with their medications in a really easy way. Um, so that's sort of the reminder functionality. And then there's a couple other pieces that are really useful. Um, one, it tracks, so it creates a nice history and log. So if you want to see, oh, did I take that med on Thursday? You can go back through to Thursday, and it'll pull up a report of all the meds you took them, when you took them. Um, and so people really like that function, and it allows them to actually send an email of the history to their physician or to loved ones as well. Um, so that's kind of the two big functionalities um, when it comes to medication management through the app. Um, and then it also gives you refill reminders. So when you're managing quite a few meds, three plus, four plus meds, um, it helps you remember when things are running out, when you need to refill them. So it provides you nice reminders. Um, so all you do when you get the app is enter in the number of pills, the dosage, how frequently you take it, and then it gives you nice reminders about when you need to, you know, make sure that those are getting refilled so you don't run out. So those are, those are big functionalities. Go ahead. I said that would have been so helpful when my, my dad was in the hospital for a month and when he came out, they were like, keep the, he was on like 25 meds it was like, keep these, take away these, add these, change these. And between my sister and I and my husband, it was so stressful because it was like, uh, are we doing this right? You know, we'd, we'd like to not kill dad with wrong medication or, you know, and then keeping track of all the different pill bottles. Oh, it was just, uh, it was too much. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's a lot. And so the people who use our app, you know, they, they, they need the help with managing that. So like I myself, when I was 20 and I was studying healthcare management policy at, at Georgetown, um, I, my, I had to take care of my mom. She uh, went through a CML uh, blast crisis. So she was in and out of the hospital for about six months. And so... She was on, you know, 12 to 20 meds during this period at its peak. And, you know, it, the, one of the big functions that it was able to serve or would have been able to serve at that time is having a centralized location for those meds to also be stored. So we were going to see a hematologist oncologist. We were going to see an endocrinologist. We were going to see an eye surgeon. So we had a bunch of different physicians we were going to visit, and they all prescribed their own medications. So having it all in one spot, I was using pen and paper at the time because I wasn't involved with the app, but it would have been so nice to have this electronically available. So when the doctors are like, oh, what meds are you on? I can just scroll through the app and show it to them, right? Or I can send them an email with a report. Um, so that's, that's sort of the, that's a really big, you know, just management, having it all in one place is also another function there. Um, but the, the cool thing with the features is that it's built for med management. So it's not just like going into your Apple calendar and putting the reminders in there or your reminders, it lets you postpone meds. It lets you suspend meds. If a physician calls and says, hey, we're going to suspend this medication, um, it lets you do that on the app itself. So it's built for medication management, um, as opposed to when you have to kind of use other functionalities that do reminders, um, it, it's a little bit of a workaround. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Totally. Well, fortunately, in my household, none of us except until this past summer, I'm not on anything other than supplements and hubby is on the warfarin for, he had, to, he ended up with blood clots in his lungs. So hopefully it's a, he was through the treatment. The doctor said, once you're done with the pills that you have, you know, then you don't worry about it. And if the symptoms come back, then they'll deal with it. So we don't, we haven't had prescription medications to deal with personally with our own lives, but with, and my mom is in a memory care residence, so they deal with it. Uh, it might actually be useful if I downloaded the app so I knew what she was on. I might have to look at that with that in mind, because sometimes the doctors ask, and if I forget to have the med staff print out what she's on, I, I don't remember because I don't give it to her. <laughs> right. 
Right. So we have a couple of, of functions when it comes to being a caregiver too. So, you know, when it comes to, uh, you know, dementia care, um, and like I mentioned, when my mom was sick, she was on a bunch of medications and um, she had been in the hospital for a while. So she was, she was exhibiting dementia like symptoms as well. Um, and so, you know, it's really tough for them to be able to remember and, and maintain that sort of med list as they go through their own care. And so as caregivers, um, like I said, I was managing it on paper, which was a terribly, you know, time consuming process and really lends itself to making some mistakes. Um, so the, the electronic functionality really helps in that area. Um, but when it comes to being caregivers, the app has some other functionalities as well. So we have something called cloud sync and that lets you actually see your, uh, loved one's med list. So if they have their own device, they have their app on there. You can actually sync with it. So you can manage your own and you can see theirs. So you can actually get their reports. You can see their, you know, remote medication reminders. So for example, our CEO, his, his mom lives in India. And so he's able to see her medication reminders and her medication schedules. And if she takes her meds or not from Washington, DC. So the functionality to be able to do remote monitoring, if this person's in a facility, if they're uh, living at home and they have home care coming to their house, it's possible for a family member or somebody, a loved one or a friend to actually be able to see this and have some peace of mind in knowing that if they're in their home, they're taking their meds or they're getting their meds they get into them, or if they're in a facility, that's also able to happen. That sounds fantastic. Because I, I know when my dad was on hospice, we had 24-7 caregivers for the two of them. And it was really confusing. <laughs> One point, I don't remember if it was the hospice nurse, I think it was, called me and said, I have this prescription bottle and I don't know, who is this Misty? And I'm I laughed. I'm like, oh, that's the dog. <laughs> so we had, you know, meds for my mom <laughs> and the supplements and vitamins and meds for my dad and one for the dog. And it was just this pile of pill bottles on the kitchen counter in a basket. I mean, it was just, I'm a super organized person and that made me crazy. And we just had to, yeah. had to trust that the company that we hired to take care of them when we weren't there was doing what they were supposed to do, which they did, but having the app would have been very useful. Yeah. So, you know, we have the consumer app, like I mentioned, it has all those functionalities, but we're also building a product that we have almost completed with, with a home care agency as well. So that gives the caregivers sort of the, this admin module to go around and make sure they're tracking the meds that are, that are being taken by the patient. Um, and so they're all on the same system. So now family caregivers can take a look at it. Um, patients can see and the caregivers from like the formal home care agency is they are able to see as well. And then back at the home care agency's office, oftentimes they have a nurse, uh, a registered nurse, like monitoring medication lists. Um, they are able to manage all their patients remotely as opposed to, um, you know, having to do it with each individual patient. So we do have that functionality that has come out now um, that we're providing for home care agencies as well. Um, but like I said, the app for patients, caregivers um, is available on, on the app store. So Android, uh, the Apple app store and Amazon's app store as well. That sounds fantastic. The, the home care agency we hired, they had their own app and the, the caregivers would, it would, it would alert you that caregiver and it would tell their name is on their way. And then at the end of their shift, they would file a report and then you would get the report almost immediately, which sometimes was not fun at breakfast because it was three times a day, you know, three shifts of eight hours. And so it was, you know, add that to what you're talking about. Just, oh, that would make life so much easier for people like myself. Yeah, and so that's our goal. Um, so we're, we're trying to, A, promote the app um, for people to get. And it's extremely affordable. There's a free version. Um, and then if you want that cloud sync function, it's two ninety nine a month. So we price it pretty affordably. Um, and then the home care agencies are able to actually buy our products for a very reasonable price as well. Um, so that they're able to actually serve all their patients with it for one low flat rate. Um, and so the goal here is to get 
this type of platform into the home care space and into the caregiver space because it's a space that we identified as being really sort of under under they don't use technology as well as a lot of other healthcare functions and healthcare as a whole doesn't use it very well but our goal is to try and use technology to make lives easier because you know i as a caregiver um you know i it, it's not it's not fun um and anything that you can do to make the workflow and to make the daily activities of caregiving easier, it gives you more time to kind of sit there and realize that this is a tough situation for yourself. Um, so, you know, making the actual functional daily activities easier um, was something that I found to be the hardest um, for myself. And so that's what we're trying to do. We well, yeah, people like myself, caregivers, a lot of times they, they look at it as a relationship. Like I'm obviously the daughter, you know, my sister's the daughter you know, or you're the spouse of someone that needs care, they don't realize it's not a, caregiving is not a relationship. It is a job. And there are so many mm-hmm. different functions, like financial management, which I can do, but it's not my thing. You know, my dad had his medications all in a spreadsheet, you know, like Excel. And yeah. I don't do Excel. I am a creative person. I'm an artist. <laughs> I'm a photographer and a podcaster, mm-hmm. so I am on that side of the yep. brain, and I don't do Excel. Yep. And ugh, I couldn't have updated his thing to save my. I probably would have deleted stuff. And yeah, you know, this was almost three years ago that he ended up in the hospital and then home on hospice. And there's a lot of technology that's come out, but I've also noticed what you're noticing is that you know the older generation like my mom's generation doesn't use the technology they don't turn to see if there is a techno- technology solution to their their challenge so i like to get out that word too because there's also a lot of millennial caregivers out there and obviously they would look towards technology but it's um everybody's caregiving journey is just enough different that it's sometimes hard to find the right solutions it's not, it's not like one size fits all. Yeah, definitely. So like, you know, I, I'm like right on the edge of millennial. Um, and so when I was going through my you know, time caregiving, I didn't even think about looking into technology though, too. So, you know, I, I kind of grew up in a generation that, you know, usually had smartphones. And so um, even then I wasn't even thinking like, oh, I wonder if there's an app out there that would make this easier. So it's a relatively new space, um, even for people who are very tech savvy. Um, so we, we see like a pretty good opportunity to be able to sort of promote this, um, and get this into the hands of people to actually try and improve, um, sort of what this looks like. Um, we actually just submitted a, uh, grant proposal with the National Institutes of Aging, um, to develop the product further and try and get it into sort of federal programs as well. Um, so that's sort of what uh, the, the company is trying to do right now. Um, but you're right. I mean, when it comes to everybody has their own sort of caregiving journey, they have their own struggles, they have their own difficulties with it. Um, and, but the one thing that we've kind of found that's almost universal is, is medication management. Um, and we were at the aging 2.0 conference in, in Baltimore two nights ago. And the, the researchers there were like the number one complaint of caregivers is managing medications. Um, so there's a lot of pharmacists there. And so, we, we feel that our app is, a, is, is pretty applicable universally to at least helping with the, the medication management piece. Well, each little piece helps. Just, you know, like, yeah. I don't have to deal with my mom's meds, obviously, and she's not on very many, so it wouldn't be a mm-hmm. challenge even if she was with me every day. But the challenge uh-huh. of she's very good. My mom is in the later stages of Alzheimer's. And she does not do it intentionally, but she is so good at pushing every single one of my buttons. It's just like, I don't know how she's so good at this. You know, she can't remember how to tie her shoes much, but she can push every single last nerve. And sometimes you just end up so frustrated that it would be easy Mm -hmm. to, you know, you'd be frustrated. It's like, did I give her her dinner time meds or not? They're not in, are they in the mm-hmm. box? You know, and just, it, it would be nice to have a backup just to, you know, keep your mind at ease because dealing with people like my mom or, you know, it's a big challenge 
mentally and physically. So the more tools that we have for caring for them, the better. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, like I remember when I was, I was managing all these medications, uh, we had a Tupperware box um, and I would take them out of the box when I gave them and put them back in. And then I would also try and mark them on this piece of paper that we had in a binder. Um, and so, but the thing is, is like, if you forget to mark on a piece of paper, um, it's just not as easy as just clicking, I took this um, with a tap, um, which, which is what the app is able to do. And then, like I said, it's got that dose history in there. So you can quickly go back and see, oh, did I give lisinopril or did I give warfarin uh, in the morning dose today? And you can go back in and say, oh, oh I might have missed that or, or I took it. So we're all set with that. Um, and so it, is, it can be a backup. And our users really report that uh, the history function is something that they use quite a bit. Um, so it really helps them, A, sharing that with their physicians um, where they have that uni- universal medication list. So if their primary care doctor um, you know, wants to see what else they've been prescribed or their over-the-counter medications that they're taking, um, then it's able to do that function as well. So with the app, when they take it, are they, are they telling the app that they've taken it? Yeah. So the way that it works is you, you get your application downloaded on a tablet or cell phone, um, so your iPhone, any of the Android devices. And then you go take out all your medications that you're taking, your supplements, your vitamins, anything else that's, that's being taken. And you enter it into the app. There's a nice interface. It's pretty simple to use. It's optimized for um, older adults. And it allows for um, entering those meds. And then once it's entered, the schedule's entered and the dose is entered, it will automatically remind. Um, and so at the time that it comes up, it will gently remind on the phone. It will pop up. It'll make a sound. Um, and then you'll just click take. Um, and so it will remind you to take the meds at the times that you've specified. And then um, it will record that you've taken it. Um, so all you have to do is click one tap on the screen um, and you're good to go. That sounds fantastic. It's like, I, yeah, we're, uh, we're very excited about it. <laughs> how long has this app been out? So the app itself has been out since 2010. So it's been on the app store. So it's been tried and tested um, and improved um, based on comments and based on user feedback. Um, so it's been out for quite a while. Um, we've had over half a million downloads of the application. Um, and we have quite a few daily users currently. Um, so people who have been using it since 2010, since 2014. Um, and so one of the key functions that it serves for the health system perspective or from health policy perspective is that it helps improve medication adherence. So one of the big problems with you know, any medication regimen with patients is that they don't take their medications once it's prescribed and they end up getting sicker or, um, you know, their condition doesn't improve. And so we extend the time uh, that people are adherent to their medications, which um, we believe and we have some clinical studies um, that show that actually it does improve adherence for patients uh, for a longer period of time. That wasn't something that I would have considered, but I'm pretty good. You know, the doctor says, take these antibiotics for 10 days. You take them for 10 days. I know what happens when you don't. Yep. And, so I'm good. I'm good at yeah. adherence, but so I would not have thought that I would not, that would not have been something that I would have thought would be a benefit from using the app. So that's really an interesting little fact. And the fact that you guys have been out for almost yep. a decade. Ooh, that's a long, that's a long time in the app world. Oh yeah. Yeah. We've been around for a while. Um, and right now we're also expanding, like I said, into the home care space. So we've kind of adapted the application for use by, by the home care agencies and their caregivers. Um, so that's sort of one of our new products that we've sort of developed right now. Um, but yeah, so our primary value that we add for, um, caregivers and for patients is that it's just a medication reminder app and it tracks it and it keeps it all in one spot. Um, so that's, that's primarily why, why our users actually download the app. Um, but on a larger scale, um, medication adherence has been estimated to be about a $300 billion problem for the United States. So um, it's attributable, uh, $300 billion of U.S. healthcare costs is attributable to uh, treatment plan non-adherence and medication non-adherence. So um, it's a big space in technology right now uh, that's, that we're trying to solve um, because, you know, we're able to keep patients adherent to the meds that we know help their conditions. And then, therefore, their conditions are able to be stable or to improve. And so we have less emergency department visits. We have less inpatient admissions. And so 
that is sort of one of the key functions from, from a larger scale that um, the technology is trying to solve for. That's amazing because 300 billion is not exactly a small number. Yeah, no, absolutely not. I mean, there, there's um, a lot of so research it, or there's a lot of stuff you can do with $300 billion other than treating people who aren't taking their medications properly. <laughs> Oh, absolutely. So, you know, with $300 billion, you know, we can also hope that a lot of those savings go back to the American taxpayer as well. So we know that healthcare costs are a huge issue of discussion nationally right now. And so one of the, the goals is to be able to, you know, actually reduce costs by improving patient conditions and patient health. Um, a lot of times we know that cost cutting measures are um, people try to, you know, deny care or, um, you know, keep push people to different providers or deny, um, you know, you have to get referrals. So um, our goal is to be able to actually improve health. Well, you're improving people's health and you're helping, well, you're improving caregiver health as well. So do you know the story of how the app got started? Because you mentioned that your CEO was remotely taking care of his mother in a different country. That's a big challenge. So I recently joined the company. Um, I, I, was, I was consulting for the company um, in their move into the uh, business enterprise space for home care and for health plans. Um, and so I, I recently joined. And so the way that I understand that the company started was in 2010, there was a, an MIT software engineer, um, now Google software engineer, um, I believe. And they made the app just because software engineers one day got bored and decided they wanted to build an application. And so uh, they made the app, put it on the app store, um, and it was born. So DoseCast was born at that point in time. That's crazy. <laughs> That's really funny. That's, I, I mean, it's like, because I can't yeah. even... I'm lucky if I can use apps, much less I can't create one, but that's that's funny. That was, oh, I was going to yeah. ask, have you guys looked into the memory care resident uh, business? Because the caregivers that I deal with, the med techs, they have this big cart with a laptop on it and this big old binder, and it just looks like a pain in the neck. <laughs> Oh yeah. And yep. So we actually have looked at that. Okay. Yep. Yep. So we our our home care product is very similar to our sort of facility product. Um, so we actually do enable. Uh, we have a, a just an admin portal where med techs can go around and they can have a, their assigned patients and they can go and they can use the same tapping function to record that a patient took their medication as well as recording how that patient is feeling today. So that's another function of the app. Um, we ask patients. How are you feeling today? Um, caregivers can record how they're feeling today. So there's a record of that piece um, in that same history log. Um, so we have that function for inpatient facilities as well um, and memory facilities. So med techs that go around administer medications, they can simply tap on a tablet. Um, and we have that record in place um, for both health status and medication administration. Because that seems like something that would be useful where my mom lives. But it's a corporation... You know, they have multiple residents, faci not facilities, communities all over the country. So I wouldn't have much, I wouldn't, I wouldn't know who to help you contact, but I, I, I see an option there too. Right. Yes. A bit. Um, so we, we have a uh, Instagram for our home care products uh, called Dosecast Home Care um, on Instagram. And then we are uh, currently in the process of setting up a web page. We just uh, got a brochure made for our product for home care. Um, and we'll be getting one made for our, our inpatient facilities uh, in the next week or so. So um, we are, are working through existing relationships to try and get in contact with a lot of these facilities because there's so many of them. So we, uh, like I said, we were in a um, home care franchise in Los Angeles right now with our, our home care products. Um, so they've been sort of our... Uh, our test area. So we've worked out a bunch of the bugs and got it really nicely uh, put together for them. Um, so now we're ready to kind of take it to other places. That sounds awesome. So is there anything else listeners should know before I let you dash off into the evening? <laughs> Let's see here. Well, you know, you should, they should know that, you know, it's easy to go online uh, to their app store on their devices and download Dosecast today um, and play with the functionality. Um, I would say, Follow us on Facebook, on Instagram, at DoseCast app. 
Um, we, we put out a lot of good content on medication management, um, and we provide a lot of good information about the features of the app as well. Um, I'd also say that we have a really dedicated team behind this. Um, we've all been caregivers before, um, so we've really built this product for um, the customers we're trying to reach. And, uh, you know, we're, our, our main goal, like I said, is, is to improve medication adherence so that people are able to, um, you know, improve their health status and be able to um, live the best quality of life that's possible. But also, you know, caregivers as well, um, you know, a big underappreciated part of the population uh, it's a, such an important job. And so um, we hope that the, the medication management function of the app really makes that process just a little bit easier. Um, it's a terribly difficult position to be in. Um, and so our hope is that, you know, maybe this makes it a little bit easier so you can take a little bit more time for yourself. Which is definitely an important thing to do and very difficult, as you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, that's our hope with the product. And, uh, you know, besides that, I really appreciate your taking the time today. And uh, I've enjoyed uh, talking to you and uh, learning a little bit about your experience today. Well, thank you. I will make sure that at least for iPhones and iPads, the link will be in the show notes to the App Store. Um, I don't think I can link because I'm all Apple, all Mac. Mm -hmm. So it's hard to to, um, get the links to the Android stuff, but it's obviously easy to find. And then I've looked at it on gotcha. in the app store. It looks really great. And I think I might download it and play with it just for future knowledge, I guess. <laughs> and I really appreciate gotcha. you talking yep. to me today and best of luck with the in-home care business. Cause I think that's, that's a great option for everybody. Yep. Well, thanks very much, Jen. I uh, appreciate uh, you doing those things and uh, yeah. Uh, glad to chat with you today. If you're looking for another medication management product, be sure to listen to the episode titled Pill Map. That is a fantastic visual option for managing medications. And when you listen to the episode, if you haven't done so already, you will hear a quick little story on how it being visual solved an overdosing issue, which obviously is something that we would like to manage. Well, you've made it to the end of another episode. Thank you so much for joining me. If you found this episode helpful and informative, please give us a five-star rating and review on Apple iTunes. This is how new people will find us. Also, be sure to follow us on social media. All of our accounts are linked in the show notes. And as always, I will be in your ears again next Tuesday.